I believe he has pushed in three deer, uh, might have been four. I haven't had a chance to actually look. But then he has four on wood, uh, which is not the standard play if you're going for scouts. Uh, village accounts, Alpha Omega is already behind by two villagers. Oh, that's just an unlucky boar though. The shitty pathing on that boar means that it actually ends up dying outside the TC range. SK has actually decided to wall up, which is pretty interesting. Maybe, just maybe, he actually wants to uh, drag this game to Castle Age. And only then decide to do something else oh and okay so aske gets a hit from the tc but manages to save his scout now at this point i believe both the scouts should be at the same health uh is he planning on doing any sort of nuisance over here with the villager because alpha omega's villagers do not have loom at this point uh, okay, Alpha Omega is just trying to wall in Aske's scout away. I don't think he'll be successful. Yeah, there you go. So Aske notices uh, his scout was in danger of being walled in. So yeah, he just pulls it out. Although fair play to Alpha Omega for actually trying to do this. Uh, the one thing I don't like about uh, his, his play over here is the woodland that he has picked. And just as I say that, there is an overchop and there's a clear entrance into... This is Amba Camp, basically. I do hope he actually notices this early enough and just walls it up. But I would have liked to see him uh, use this wood line for a Lumber Camp. Okay, so... Alpha Omega is basically going for a 25 pop build. Uh, whereas Aske, I believe, has quite a few more. Uh, okay, I... Yes, he just wants to go for a fast castle, a 27 plus 2 build basically because he's already got two villagers on gold. Yeah, there we go. So that's the gold mining camp coming up. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. Uh, ah, there you go. There's the second gold pile for Aske. That's, that, that's like not even on the same screen almost. It's pretty bad. But yeah, there you go. Although it is interesting to see that Alpha Omega with two villagers less is just like half a percent faster to feudal age. So, I mean, he has had some uh, uh, idle time on this TC. Yeah. And yeah, so both of them have loom at this point. Alpha Omega here going for the barracks. Let's just check out the scouting. So yeah, SK basically has a bunch of waypoints over here set up. So I mean he sees both of his wood lines. Alpha Omega's. Unfortunately he has not found the gold that Alpha Omega is using. And as I say that both of them reach the feudal age. Alpha Omega should be able to put up a stable pretty much instantly. I wonder why he's not doing that. Mm, yeah, I mean, this, this delay is not good. He has the food and he has the resources to just drop a stable instantly if he wanted to. And yeah, I mean, unfortunately, these uh, walls to save the gold villagers means that, that that lady is basically outside the mining camp at this point. So you'll have to delete this at some point. Hopefully, he does notice. Okay, yeah, so there we go. And yeah, I mean, that, that stable is actually quite late. Like, it's, it's 14 and I mean, almost 14 and a half minutes and his stable isn't up. I think what he should have done at this point is just use like maybe a couple more villagers and just get the stable up as soon as possible. And okay, so Alpha Omega has paused that point. Uh, let's just look at Aske's scouting. So Aske has now okay, so Aske does not actually see the gold mining camp yet. 
Okay, so they've resumed. Meanwhile, let's look at Alpha Omega scouting. So, yeah, it's. Uh, oh man! SK just sniped a villager over here. Uh, that's pretty unfortunate. So he's already one villager down. Interestingly, Alpha Omega is going for a double stable. Wow. Which means he'll be able to get the scouts out slightly quicker and since he's playing as the Huns, so the stables work 20% faster anyway. So this should actually be pretty nice. I mean, I wish he had got the stable up slightly earlier. But yeah, I mean, there we go. And not only that, he's also getting black lines on his scouts. So this should actually be interesting to watch. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Aske with the double archery range, so he's basically going for archers here. I believe he already has a spear out. Okay, so I think I saw him queuing up a spear, but he seems to have cancelled that. Ah, no, no, no. There we go. So, he already has two spears uh, inside his barracks. The thing is... Uh, I think Aske is already completely walled, so those scouts won't be doing much. And not only that, but Alpha Omega himself isn't walled up completely. Uh, this side is completely open. So archers can easily just get in, deny the gold over here, or maybe they could just camp over here and deny both the wood lines, basically. Okay, so I was actually talking about Aske going for archers, but instead he's, he's gone for janitors. Nice. He's... I mean, he was obviously in Cassidage. So, he's got his janitors out and... I mean, as I was saying earlier, uh, this is a pretty shocking wood line. So, I mean, he did manage to uh, cover up that hole. But, yeah, I mean, it won't do much. Although I am curious why he's going for a barracks and an archery range here. Uh, his scouts would have been able to take care of the janitors. Um, it's a pretty interesting unit. Talking about nobody usually goes for janitors unless, uh, uh, like, un unless they are like in under very specific circumstances. So yeah. Okay, this, 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 yeah, this is pretty bad. I don't think he has any wood income at this point. He'll have to build another lumber camp just to start uh, collecting his wood. And he's going for the stone, right? So is he about to place a tower or something? Okay, so he's basically just sent six villagers out to what he assumes will be a safe lumber camp. Uh, which Aske has not scouted. Let's just see if Aske has actually scouted uh, that part of the map. Okay, he has. So he should be able to see the top trees once they actually start uh, going down. And yeah, I mean, here we go. This is the uh, this is what early pressure would do for most players. Uh, it's a pretty unbalanced eco at this point. He's got 16 on gold. <laughs> Uh, and it's not even something where he has just set his uh, villager gather point uh, for his TC to the gold. So he has basically just actively sent out a uh, shitload of villagers to gold. Unfortunately, he is not in Castle Age yet. Uh, although he does have the buildings to click up, he does not have the food that is required. Okay, this is funny. This is funny. Uh, yeah. So this single janitor is basically doing quite a lot of damage here and same thing over here. Uh, these 10 janitors have actually denied all of his gold income and Alpha Omega, as I say that, has decided to get the wheelbarrow. Unfortunately, he does not have the food now to click up. He'll basically have to just build a market and buy some food to click up. Uh, let's hope he actually does that. Uh, 
Okay, so this Lumber Camp is already found out. I don't think Aske is interested in going. Okay, so he does actually notice this and he is sending a scout over there to check out what's going on. And yeah, so this Lumber Camp has been found out as well. Meanwhile, he has his market up, so he can click up if he needs to. I, I, I don't understand why he's going for stone at this point. He has clicked up to castellates. And uh, I mean, considering it's just genitals, he should be able to like get to castellates easily. That should not be an issue. And once he... Oh, okay. So he just decides to resign over here. I mean, this is uh, pretty bad. If, if he had actually got to castellates, he had the food income at this point to at least start pumping out a few knights. And considering he already had bloodlines, it's it, it, it would not have been a bad trade against these genitals. Like Alpha Omega had the two stables, I believe, yeah. So he had two stables up already. It, it could have been a pretty interesting game. Okay. So, yeah, let's just look at the stats. Uh, military wise, yeah, so I think that was just the one scout and 22 janitors from Maske. Uh, pretty kick ass KD for him, 19 to 0. Economy, I mean, he was able to get to Castle Age, so I haven't actually seen if he dropped a second or a third TC. So you just go back to the map and check that out. Map exploration was, uh, I mean, it was pretty good for both the players, it's just that. Uh, Alpha Omega did not get to use his scouting. So, yeah, I mean, let's just take a look at ASCII's base. So, okay, so this was basically a 1 TC play from him. And just use the 3 archery ranges to start spamming janitors. Okay, so. GG's from both the players. Let's just go and wait into the lobby. I believe we should have the second set starting soon. Unfortunately, Aske was actually, uh, like, uh, I mean, he had some work after his matches, so he wanted to basically just finish off the first set and start with the second set immediately. Unfortunately, his challenger seems to not be available right now. So, I think what we can do at this point is uh, just wait for his challenger to show up if... If for whatever reason, due to some issues or whatever, if he's not able to show up, I think we'll basically have to let Aske go because, uh, I mean, he has his reasons, so, yeah. Let's just update the scores in the meanwhile.
Okay, so we should have a second set because uh, his next challenger, AVR, has responded and he's just busy having his dinner. So once he's done with his dinner, uh, hopefully when, within the five minutes that he has said that he was finished, we can get on to the next set. Uh, let me just update the scoreboard over here. And yeah, so I mean we should be able to go live in the next five minutes or so. Uh, I'll just take a 30 second break and I'll be right back.
Uh, okay, guys. So we are back, and I believe the challenger is ready as well. So you should be good to go in a few seconds, I believe. Right. Okay. So uh, AVR, the challenger that we are talking about, that is eleven uh, V Rudy San over here, who is at twelve hundred and fifty ELO, and he is going up against Aske. Let me just uh, check if everything's right with the overlay. Yeah, so the overlay, the scoreboard, everything seems fine. Uh, meanwhile, unfortunately, since uh, Aske was not able to hop into the voice chat today, uh, he actually had some tips that he wanted to get Alpha Omega. So if I can just read them out. Uh, it was uh, mostly just the fact that he needed to focus on standard build orders, uh, get comfortable with say the 22 pop scouts build and then adapt to whatever is going on. So yeah, and if the opponent is uh, going for archers or spears, uh, he should just add a few farms, uh, maybe add a range for skirms. And yeah, I mean, if it's just scouts versus scouts, then just uh, wall up, get to castle age and then react on like what your save is good at and at the same time what your opponent is making so yeah and meanwhile Aske has said in the chat here that a simple 22 pop scouts build uh, I mean being a master at that can get you to 1600 or so either, which sounds pretty interesting uh, maybe I can give it a go and try and raise my pleb level either to even like 1400 or whatever let's see i think these guys might have just gone live so let me take a look over here Okay, so it seems AVR has decided to host the game in the lobby. So, yeah, we already have both the players in the lobby. So, yeah, I think they should be about to go. Right, so Aske in the voice chat says, instead of trying different things, the best thing is to just do the same thing and get better at it by learning where you're going wrong. Makes sense. I mean, that is how I actually got from, I think it was 850 or 70 to 1100. It was just basically focusing on a single build order, uh, getting better at it. And the issue in, in my case was that my feudal age was actually pretty good. I was able to apply pressure on players and whatever. The thing is, if the game actually went on to Imperial Age and post-Imperial, that is where I had my weaknesses. So, like, as you get better with sort of each age, like Feudal Aggression or Castle Aggression or whatever, uh, more and more mistakes start popping up uh, the longer the ga game goes on. So in that case, then you can just start making those small tweaks to your game and you'll just be a better player overall so yeah just chip away at it and yeah so these guys have gone live let me just change the over there and if you are going for the try hard uh, stream delay because he suspects that Aske actually takes a look at the stream while he's playing and he does sni stream sniping. So, I mean, thankfully it's just a, I assume a two minute stream delay there. Or maybe a one minute, I don't know what the options are. But, yeah. 
and looking at the sieves so sk has ended up with the cumins and avr has the japanese uh, what i'll just do is i'll reduce the music volume because i forgot to change that and we are playing on sundarbans so uh, i believe this is the second most picked map in the tournament after surma let me just turn on the scores over here and immediately we see avr uh he is trying to scout the forward uh he has a couple of water buffaloes to help him scout his own base and he has lamed aske's water buffaloes over here he might be able to lame a third one uh, there we go but i think aske has noticed that his water buffalo is being lamed uh, although i don't think he is interested in actually doing anything about it so yeah avr has actually managed to lame three of aske's water buffaloes uh which means uh since there's only a single boar uh on your side of the map i mean for each player so all aske has apart from i think the two or three water buffaloes that he had is the single boar and since there are no berries on this map so that means that he'll have to actually get his fishing ships out uh, as soon as possible and maybe might even have to drop a farm let's see Uh yeah, hey Tala, it's an idea. What's up, man? Uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, considering the stuff that was going on in Hyderabad yesterday. Uh, is SK dropping a dock yet? Uh, surprisingly, he hasn't gone for a dock yet. Okay, so he does not have the wood for that. He has his zamba camp up, and he's playing as the cumins. So, I mean, the meta with cumins is usually to just get to feudal age with say 17 or so villagers, and then just drop a second TC, get a big boom going, and after that, it's usually cavalry in the form of knights, cavaliers, or paladins, along with some kipchaks. So, should be interesting to see. And on the other side, uh, AVR is playing as the Japanese. So, they get some pretty nice fishing ship bonuses where their fishing ships actually have more HP on them. And on top of that, uh, I believe their attack is faster. Let me just take a look at this. So, yeah. So, their fishing ships actually have twice the HP and... 2 pierce armor plus their work rate increases uh, once it gets to feudal age and further unfortunately he's housed which means uh, the dock will be slightly delayed and he finally just uh, pulls in his own two water buffaloes uh, let's see what aske scouting is like so okay aske has basically scouted the entirety of his base and he's busy pushing deer so maybe he can just get to feudal age with uh, pushing deer rather than having to drop farms or whatever because he's not got any sort of uh, okay so yeah there's his first fishing ship that is queued i think avr will be first to the fishing ships yeah there we go And AVR gets housed again. I think this happens quite a lot on water maps since you have the extra uh, pop space being required for the fishing ships, which means people forget uh, to make the extra houses. Uh, they queue up a bunch of fishing ships and they just forget to build the houses for those. Okay, so Aske, I don't think he's interested. He has got the loom at this point. Uh, maybe because he saw Avia's scout. 
I mean, that's the only explanation. He wasn't housed at any point, and as I say that, he gets housed. So both the players get housed. Uh, Evr, I believe, has been housed twice. And yeah, so he's just clicked up to few days with 19 villagers and that's three fishing ships. The usual uh, water build order or the hybrid build order requires you to add four fishing ships. So he's gone with one fishing ship less. I mean, as a Japanese, I would always prefer to just go for fishing ships rather than uh, dropping farms or whatever. Uh, he has not added a second dock yet. And yeah, so I think AVR will end up losing his scout. I mean, that, that scout has done a lot of work for him, got him three water buffaloes. And he's pretty much scouted uh, where uh, Aske's woodline is. He knows about those berries over there. Okay, so he just lets the scout go. Fair enough. I believe he sh he's yeah so I think he'll basically just start scouting at this point it's nice waypoints from him and AVR already has the fire galley the first fire galley queued up unfortunately he's housed again so I think that's him being housed for the third time and unfortunately that means that he's having to queue up town watch just to not get idle time on his TC. I think it would just be a smart play over here to uh, build maybe a couple more houses just to be safe. Rather than get housed again. Because the dock production is going to cause him to get housed again pretty soon. I don't see him building another house right now. I mean he has a shuttle of wood. He could basically uh, completely wall off. Uh, this this open area with houses but as I say that he just adds a second or the third Lama camp rather and we have the first fire galley heading out Aske meanwhile is still on his on a single dock at this point he has queued up a stable he has the resources if he wants to drop another TC, but instead he just uh, opts to go for an archery range. Fair enough. Uh, fair is AVR's fire galley. Wait, where did that fire galley go? Okay, no, no, this is just uh, bad. He's, he's letting his fire galley idle. He could have actually taken uh, a couple of fishing ships. Instead, uh, Aske has queued up a demo raft. Right. So AVR is up with a single spearman over here. I mean, they are Japanese spearmen, so they are pretty nice. Uh, considering they attack faster compared to regular infantry. But, yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense to uh, send a single spear out. Because these scouts are just about to head to AVR's base. And yeah, so this scout will go down as well. And along with that, most of his scouting information. Yeah. And AVR, instead of going for the fishing ships, decides to go for the wood. He has one kill at this point, uh, compared to Aske's four kills. But Aske is now moving out with uh, archers and scouts. Is is AVR walling up? I think at this point it, it would make sense to just uh, try and wall up your base, secure it, and maybe just try and boom. Because he's not queuing up uh, galleys from the back dock. The front dock is what is being used to uh, make the warships, right? And there we go, yeah. So we have the two fire galleys from AVR out. Uh, Aske is actually repairing his fire galley, and as I say that, he just pulls it out to try and save his fishing ships. 
So AVR manages to actually kill uh, one more of uh, Askia's fishing ship. Meanwhile, Askia is already in AVR's base with a couple of scouts and three archers. Uh, no fletching yet. Uh, does he have it queued up? I don't think he has. Uh, he does have the blacksmith. So it, it shouldn't be long before he can actually do that. Uh, he just needs to wait for some food to come in. So once he has the food, uh, he should be able to get fletching immediately. Okay, so that's some pretty big damage here. Uh, AVR actually loses, I think it was three villagers to these three archers and two scouts. And AVR has this uh, spear over here, but I mean, there's no point. Uh, that spear is just going down to those archers. Well, uh, the interesting thing here is that the water battle is actually being won by AVR. But the thing is, uh, SK is not interested in water control at this point. I mean, he's got a bunch of farms up. He's got this dock, which although is not making fishing ships at this point, he can just start adding a couple of fishing ships slowly. And on top of that, he has the center control here with his TC. So he can maybe dock uh, or maybe make two docks over here. So yeah, that fire gallery should cool down. I mean, SK can just uh, make a dock over here, maybe make a couple of docks and start with his uh, fishing ships or warships or whatever he wants to go for. Okay, and as I say that, AVR has added skirms along with his spear, but unfortunately those skirms will just go down to the scouts. Uh, the spear does manage to get a scout, but yeah, okay, so that's the GG. And again, a pretty short game, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, neither player actually got to castle age here. Let's just take a look at the stats I mean it's a pretty conventional humans build with the second TC and everything and although he wasn't about to click up anytime soon there was no way AVR could have actually defended against this I mean his, his equal was uh, pretty bad and uh, massive villager difference as well even though uh, AVR had the fishing ships it was looking pretty bad yeah so let's just take a look at the stats. Military numbers. Uh, AVR actually had the larger military, although I believe it was mostly just uh, fire ships and maybe a couple of skirms and spears. And meanwhile, Askia just went for scouts and archers, which was enough to kill AVR. Eco-wise, yeah, the food collected is pretty similar, although Aske has a thousand more wood and 200 more gold. So, yeah, that's GG's for game one. Let me just update the scoreboard. Game 2 should be Arabia. And yeah, SK has posted game 2. So I'll just relay that information to AVR. Okay, great. So this is actually nice to see the games. I mean, even though they are getting over quite quickly, uh, there is not a lot of time being wasted here between the games. Where I mean, in some cases we had uh, players who were slightly late or maybe.